What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing to my channel. And while you're at it, smash that like button for me. I really would appreciate it. Also, hit that post notification bell for me so that you're notified every time I upload a new video. Be careful down in the comment section of the videos, guys. A lot of spam, a lot of scammers. I will never ask you to contact me by WhatsApp or Telegram. I also do not invest money for my subscribers. So please be careful. Don't get yourself scammed. Fed Chair Jerome Powell at his meeting at Jackson Hole today had something pretty hawkish to say about our economy. He basically stated that price stability is the number one concern for the Fed. And they're gonna do what it takes in order to bring inflation down so that the average American can afford the basic essentials they need in order to live. See, with inflation at eight and a half percent, there is a lot of people who can't afford to buy the basic necessities, guys. And the Fed chair recognizes that, you know, and they're going to do what they need to do to bring inflation down. Two of the things that Fed chair Jerome Powell mentioned that will need to happen in order for inflation to come down is increasing short-term interest rates, and a softening labor market. So what has the Fed done up until now in 2022 to help bring inflation down by increasing interest rates? Well, they've increased short-term interest rates four times this year already. Two of those increases have been 75 basis point increases. And they're going to be meeting in September. And speculation is they're going to increase short-term interest rates by another 75 basis points. So you'll have five rate hikes in the first nine months of 2022. In the fourth quarter of 2022, it's widely speculated that they will increase short-term interest rates two more times. So we'll have a, a total of seven short-term interest rate hikes in one year. So that's one thing that the Fed can do to help bring down inflation. The second thing is a softening labor market. Unfortunately, some people will lose their jobs. See, here's the situation, man. When you have a labor market that's on fire like our labor market, where you have over demand and you have a limited supply of labor, what does that do to labor costs? They go through the roof, right? So we have to soften that strong labor market in order for prices to come down to give us that price stability that we're looking for. Remember, when you have a over demand of something and a limited supply to support that demand, it's not sustainable. And that's where we get that strong labor market for. At least that's the way I took it when I listened to his remarks. My recommendation is go out online and pull up his, it was about a 10 minute speech. Go pull that speech up that Fed Chair Jerome Powell did today at Jackson Hole, and you can listen to it and, and come to your own conclusion. But what I got out of it was, they're gonna be extremely hawkish, guys, when it comes to bringing inflation down through interest rate hikes and through a forced softening in the labor market. That's right, you heard me. A forced softening in the labor market. They're gonna, we're gonna have to have a softening in that labor market. So yeah, those are the two things that he really mentioned that stood out to me. The thing we got to understand about inflation is it really should be at about 2%. That's where our economy thrives at its best when inflation is between two and two and a half percent, right? Right now it's at eight and a half percent. It's, it's not sustainable. So what did that do to the stock market 
when Fed Chair Jerome Powell delivered that 10 minute speech. Well, it, it caused a sell off. All three major indexes sold off. Dow, S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. When you look at your top tech companies, Amazon, Apple, Meta, Microsoft, you know, you look at those guys, they all sold off. They all are trading lower than where they started the day. And I think that's throughout all of the stock market. Because again, although inflation was lower in July year over year than it was in June year over year, June year over year was 9.1, uh, uh, July year over year was 8.5, it's still not enough. It's not enough. It has to, we have to con still see uh, a, a, a sharp decline in inflation in order for us to feel more comfortable, at least at the Federal Reserve level, right? And they don't see that. So they're, they're being quite hawkish. Like I said, they're meeting again in September and it's widely speculated that they're gonna bump interest rates another 75 basis points in order to help fight inflation. And I think they have to, right? So that's where we're at, man. Uh, stock market rally is over, guys. Uh, back to things being at heavy discounts again. So what you should be doing, in my opinion, is um, just making sure that you got your emergency fund tucked away, making sure you're not spending money on things that you don't need, right? And then making sure, if you can afford to, that you're still buying discounted companies, ETFs, and crypto for long-term wealth building, right? We can't lose sight of that. The best time to build wealth is when all of these companies and these ETFs and these cryptos are on sale, guys, as long as you can hold them long term. That would be my recommendation to you. Emergency fund first. Take care of your money that you have by not buying things that you don't need that won't make you wealthy, but make somebody else wealthy. And then three, if you can afford it, continue buying in order to help you build long-term wealth through the stock market. Real estate market right now, guys, is still, from a sales standpoint, real estate sales or housing sales or home sales, however you want to categorize it, has been declining for the last 11 months. Prices are not declining though. See, big difference. Housing sales are declining, but housing prices are not declining. And the reason prices are not declining is because why? We have an inventory shortage, right? We still have people out here who can purchase homes. We do. Although the demand for buying homes has subsided somewhat, we still have a segment of people who are still looking to buy homes. And so with that, you know, low inventory, it still is propping up prices. So not sure what's going on there and when that will correct itself, but it's probably sometime in the future. Right now, you know, that, that, that housing prices, um, gas prices, food prices, insurance prices, all of that stuff is inflated right now. And that's why inflation is at eight and a half percent. And that's why the Fed Chairman Jerome Powell said, Price stability is his number one concern, right? That's their number one concern, getting things back to a point where people can afford them. And, and that's their marching orders. So they're very hawkish on that. Drop me some comments down in the comment box and let me know what you think about the Fed potentially raising short-term interest rates seven times this year in order to fight inflation. If you want up to those 12 free stocks from Weeble, click on that link down in the description box and Weeble's gonna give you up to 12 free stocks when you open that new account. Go get that free stock, go get that free money. If you're stopping by the channel for the first time, please consider subscribing, share the video, smash the like button, thoughts become things. If you can see it in your mind, you can hold it in your hands. You guys keep chasing your greatness, never stop believing in yourself, and I'm gonna catch you on the next video. Peace. Today's video is sponsored by my company, RF Financial Consulting. And in my company, I work with individuals just like you 
through financial mentoring and coaching sessions. And in those one hour sessions, we talk about strategies to help you get to your financial freedom, whether it be through real estate investing, stock market investing, creating additional streams of income, credit card arbitrage, or starting and growing a business. If that's something that you might be interested in, there's an email address in the description box of the video. Send me an email and let's discuss if I'm the right fit for you.